So now we've come to the part of the lesson that's all about molecular signals. Signals that help the cell know when to move from phase to phase of the cycle. It's going on between G1 and S, between G2 and mitosis, during mitosis. In fact, it's happening all throughout the cycle, helping the cell coordinate its growth to the needs of the organism so that it's very, very well aligned with what the overall multicellular organism needs. Signals can come from outside the cell, so that would be something like this where you have a growth hormone, which is a chemical signal outside the cell, interacts with cell membrane proteins, basically activating them, which in turn activates a lot of other molecules to send the signals into the cell's environment, the internal environment. But all of these signals, whether they originate outside the cell like growth hormones or growth factors or inside the cell, are going to end up as chemical messages inside the cell, and so they're going to be sent in a particular way. The way these chemical signals are sent has a lot to do with that allosteric regulation we talked about um, when we were discussing enzymes. That's when a molecule would bind to the part of the enzyme that was not its active site and cause it to change shape. So here we could have two molecules. When the orange molecule binds, it changes the shape of the blue enzyme to allow it to bind its substrates so it would activate the molecule, but you could also have a different molecule that would interact with the active form and inactivate it, so make it so the reactants cannot bind. And so that's the way a lot of these messages are sent. Different molecules being present or absent kind of turns on and spreads the message or shuts off the message. So it would be very much like interrupting a telephone signal. You know, either the the wireless message is turned on and it's being sent or you could turn it off um, with those inactivating molecules. Kinases are the term for a big group of enzymes that can change the shape of other molecules or enzymes by attaching a phosphate group to them. Remember phosphates are highly negatively charged and so they could really change the shape of a molecule they're bound to. So, for example, if you had enzyme A and an ATP molecule here, and you used the help of this kinase, you could phosphorylate enzyme A and activate it, and then you'd end up with an ADP. And that kinase could do this reaction, facilitate the reaction over and over, activating many enzyme A and those enzyme A molecules could in turn go on to facilitate other reactions once they've been activated. The cell cycle depends on a special group of kinases that you'll hear a lot about in upper levels of biology, and those are called the cyclin-dependent kinases. So you might guess, based on their name, that they rely on cyclin for activation, and that is exactly right. We call them CDKs, and there's a bunch of them. They all have numbers and letters to distinguish them from each other. But in general, as they build up throughout the cycle, they are able to activate the moving from one phase into another phase. And we're doing a lot of research about these molecules right now um, in the 20 teens because how the cell moves through the cycle is related to cancer, and, so, and these CDKs are very abundant during the cell cycle and as the cell moves through the cycle. They're very nuanced. They rely on lots of molecules to activate them. They have a set of molecules in charge of deactivating them. Um, they're, you know, they're finicky little molecules, but when things are just right, they do their job very, very well, and they help regulate cell division. Um, so if this is kind of hard to picture, here's what a CDK does. It can take a molecule and an ATP and it can move the phosphate and phosphorylate that molecule to make it active. In turn, that molecule can take another molecule, the kind of magenta, bright purple there, and another ATP 
and it can phosphorylate that molecule. And so you have the beginning of what we call a signal cascade, where one active enzyme passes the message to activate another enzyme, which in turn activates another and another, and it's kind of a ripple effect, and it spreads the message to the parts of the cell that need to receive that message. To picture this another way, if you had one active CDK, it could activate many molecules, many target molecules, which in turn would activate their targets, also being able to activate many of its target molecules. And so you can see that signal cascade again, passing from one molecule to the next to the next. But what you're also seeing is this amplified effect, where you have, as it moves through the cascade, more and more molecules become activated. And that's called signal amplification. So this process also increases how many signal molecules are present in the cell, and it helps the message spread faster. It's amazing how quickly our cells can respond to signals. And to wrap up our discussion of signaling, at least for right now, um, a quick example of some proteins involved in cancer research that you'll probably hear about again. Um, there's a gene called P53 that makes a protein also called P53. And the reason it's called P53 is because the protein weighs 53 kilodaltons. Now that protein can activate or stimulate P21, also named for its molecular weight. P21's job is to inhibit a CDK. So, when it's bound to the kinase, that kinase cannot bind cyclin. So it's essentially turned off. And if the kinase is turned off, then basically cell division is turned off. There, the cell won't be able to move into another phase of the cell cycle. So basically what you're doing is suppressing cell growth and cell division. And so for that reason, these guys, P53 and P21, along with a whole bunch of other molecules like them, we call them tumor suppressors because they're suppressing excessive amounts of cell division. And so they are a big part of a huge number of molecules that we're still finding very cool things about um, that all interact to control this cycle. And so that's how the message is sent, using these proteins and these enzymes and their interactions with each other. So, in kind of in conclusion, but we'll talk about signaling again, all throughout interphase, you've got CDK levels building up. And your book re um, refers to this as MPF, the maturation promoting factor. That's an outdated term, but it does relate to these different cyclin-dependent kinases increasing over time as the cell moves from G1 to S to G2 into mitosis. And you can see that CDK1 kind of mirrors this shape as it builds up over time. It kind of helps push the cell into mitosis. And so there's thresholds that must be met for the cell to move from one phase to another. And so that's how these signaling cascades and all the amplification works. All of these communicating molecules allow the cell to wait for a certain signal and then move into the next phase. And so you can see there's a number of checkpoints here. You've got G1 to S, G2 to M, and then an, during mitosis you have a little checkpoint between metaphase and anaphase. And so all of these molecules are going to be communicating to help the cell know when to move from one phase to another. And so again, those are called the cell cycle checkpoints. CDK is a huge part of that. And CDK builds up throughout interphase, finally pushing the cell into mitosis. Um, and after that happens, there's a number of other molecules in the cell that can help break down cyclins and kind of turn everything off until it's needed for the next cell cycle.